My name is Bode Augusto. The second important thing that we also need to address in our environment is concentration of wealth, more even distribution of the wealth of the nation. So those are big issues and um, can they be resolved, can they be addressed with diligence, with sincerity of purpose? There is no doubt in my mind that we can solve the problems of Nigeria in under five years. We can turn things around massively in under five years. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind about that. Well, family has helped and um, the values that my grandfather stood for, the values that my father espoused and um, what my mother used to tell us and teach us have been very helpful in life. In professional life, um, some of the people that I have worked with. I mentioned um, Mervyn Clive Taylor. There was also another partner in Price Waterhouse that was a big influence. It's past now, Chukwu Amako of Blessed Memory. I've been very helpful in uh, my professional development in what one stands for today. So overall, these are the people that have um, influenced me. But there is one other thing that um, I learned from the teachings of Prophet Muhammad that my friend once told me. And one of his teachings is that in life, let your load be light. Let your load be light. It's something that I try to practice and it's something that has been extremely useful to me in life in giving me peace of mind. In terms of humbling, uh, what I thank God for, there are two principal things. When I walk into Augusto and Co and see people working there. None of them is any relation of mine. Seeing an, an institution that is helping other people to thrive is humbling. I like that. That uh, gives me a lot of positive vibes. The other thing that uh, I am also grateful for, if I look within my house as well, because I believe that the most important thing anybody can live in this world, as far as I'm concerned, is good children. Because that's what leads to perpetual succession in society. So when I look at the, my children and what they have done, I am indeed grateful as well. I'm indeed very grateful. People speak about regrets. I don't have any. I look forward in life, I don't look back. Nothing worries me that I ought to have done this or I ought to have done that. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> well, I've always loved football and I believe I'm more passionate about uh, football than golf. And I support two football clubs. One of them you don't know. It's called Stationary Stores. <laughs> the other one is Arsenal and from my primary school days used to love uh, stationary stores and uh, they had uh, a great team and uh, won the my own equivalent of the football association cup that we played at the Onikon Stadium a number of times and uh, it was it was um, 
a big rivalry then between ECN and uh, stationary stores. And the supporters of ECN will taunt us, supporters of stationary stores, that they're older than stationary stores as a team. And we used to um, taunt them that they were envious of the young kid on the block then. It was good rivalry and it was a good time. Then when I got into secondary school, I started supporting Arsenal. So I've been an Arsenal supporter for over 50 years. And no shaking. Well, no, not really secret. One of the things that I like to do is walking, brisk walking. You know, I like to take my brisk walks. Yeah, Maybe almost every day, actually, I try to, if I'm in Portugal because there is ample room to walk around there. But even when I'm in Lagos, I do it maybe three, four times a week, walk for 30, 40 minutes at least. And um, it's a very good form of exercise, I believe. Yeah. Always fish, always. Um, once in a while, I, I eat beef. I eat meat, but uh, not the greatest fan. I used to eat a lot of prawns before I, I de developed an allergy towards it, so I don't take it any longer. But uh, fish is uh, what I eat. I, eat. I eat fish first, chicken second, meat third. I'm from the Mediterranean, so it has to be olive oil. <laughs> <laughs> Well, areas, where are the problems that we can solve? Those are the areas of opportunity, in my opinion. What do I need to bear in mind when I'm starting a new business? It's important for you not to be sentimental, not to be carried away by sentiments. It's important for you to do your homework as to whether or not this can work. How do you know whether things this can work? Define the market that you want to serve. Talk to people in the market, knowledgeable people. They're always willing to talk and they will tell you what they want to buy they will give you an idea of the quality. They will give you an idea of the price, which more often than not, they will beat down. If they tell you 10, you no, know, they will be able to pay maybe 12 or 13. And um, so, do your homework. Is there the critical mass of people who are willing to pay for this service? Can I deliver this service at a competitive price? Because you must think of what other people are doing as well. Can I create a niche market for myself? Those are the questions that you keep begin to ask yourself. How can I differentiate myself from competition in a manner that the customer values? For example, now, I want to set up doing COVID tests. And you believe that there is a market there. And, what the, and one thing that is important to the customer is that I need to get my results within X number of hours. So that, if that is important, then it must be an important thing that you have to deliver to your customers as well. Maybe other people can deliver it as well, then you need to add something else to it as well. I can't think of any because I, I am, there's a lot of structure to my life. I can't think of any. But one unusual advice that I give to people is that uh, when the Almighty God created the world, He didn't draw lines that this is this country, this is that country. It is human beings that drew lines. So don't draw lines in your life. Go to wherever you believe you can prosper and work hard and the Almighty God will bless the work of your hands. My name is Bodea Augusto. This is Iconic Persons. Thank you.